houses over there, sky full of clouds, and fields full of cows. I know what he's thinking. I'm hungry. No, wait, that's what he's thinking. I'm thinking. Would you eat these guys? Would you eat me? Wait, this one. Okay, so um, so I'm chilling. I'm chilling out in uh, in Ireland. We had a we had an internet issue, um, but I'm I'm out here because it stopped raining. Even though it looks sunny, and it's about um, nine o'clock at night, and it's still plenty of, of daylight. Um, it rains all day, so I'm outside, cool, enjoying the the fresh country air, and uh, and I got these cows that are, are next door, and I'm thinking trying to cut back on eating meat but I haven't I haven't been with cows actually like close to them in a long time so I'm looking at these cows and I'm thinking this is what we eat we eat cow <laughs> they're so funny they're so funny anyway uh Welcome to the Paradise Paradox. My name is Aaron Battle, and in this episode, this is part two of uh, finding an alien intelligence in the desert of San Luis Potosi, Mexico, uh, where where aliens get in touch with with Kurt, or where Kurt gets in touch with with them. So there's an intelligence out there, and you have to tune into the episode because um, it's something personal. For, for Kurt, we all had individual experiences, and they're all very wild. But um, in episode one, which is uh, episode one hundred and eighteen, we go through the the foundation of the the ideas where they, they formulate how you can come across an alien intelligence and how they would how it would want to communicate with you. In this episode, which is episode one hundred and nineteen, we go through and actually talk about the experience and how that all unfolds and comes about. So this episode, Kurt really gets into the communication with the alien intelligence. To get into a little bit of uh, busyness, here we have Steemit. I don't know whether you guys have come across Steemit before, but Steemit.io is a new content platform. Somewhat like, like Reddit, where you upload in posts or stories um, you can also link other media to Steam it, but this is connected to a, an underlying cryptocurrency where you are rewarded for your content and you can upvote uh, and interact with content to also gain your own value. So this is where value is appreciated. Moving into the sharing economy where you can produce value and you're rewarded for your value. So check out Steemit. The Paradise Paradox is now launching its episodes on Steemit. You can also go to our website, www.theparadiseparadox.com to check out previous episodes. I suggest part one, which is forward slash 118 for episode 118. Uh, show notes, all show notes and the, the stories available at the website. Um, Please check out Steam It. There it is again. We are also selling t-shirts because you gotta you gotta fund yourself these days. So t-shirts are available at the website www.theparadiseparadox.com. Check it out. Um, I got a few examples scrolling up now. So again with the with the aliens, there it is. And also we are supporting decentralization of money. So it's about time that we take the power away from government institutions and governments and central banking. Let's start supporting sound money, Bitcoin, gold, and silver. So there's a t-shirt, buy a t-shirt, support sound money, support the Paradise Paradox, and we hope you enjoy the show. Let's get into it. So, 
Yeah, they said they they said to me, you know, you did that, you tried, you tried, and that, and that means a lot. Um, but then they also said to me, um, as a token of appreciation, uh, would like to give you this. And in the moment, I couldn't really acknowledge it, or I didn't understand it, or I didn't didn't pick up the thought. But but later, I I kind of realized what I had said, what what they had said rather. Now. Um, the, the, the thing was, um, later, let's see, I'm just having a look th through my notes here and trying to, trying to get the vibe of it. Um, but, well, the, let's see, in, in regards to the, to the communication. I remember go, going out again and, and, and trying to initiate a conversation again. And um, uh, I said, okay, well, let's, let's, let's start with something simple. Like um, uh, if, if I say something that's affirmative or, or for yes, you, you can move up. Uh, and they're like, up? <laughs> what's, what's up? Um, and the, I see the light blinking. It's a going going to the top right and to the bottom left and to the uh, and then and then like thirty positions all at once. Um, like, is this up? Is this up? Is this up? Is this up? Is this is this up? Uh, and I'm like, whoa! Uh, slow down there, there cowboy. Uh, <laughs> um, so that gave me the impression that that maybe spatial dimensions weren't really something that would that was so important. Uh, to this this species and like having having even not just the word but the concept of up was something that was rather foreign to them and uh, I think uh, I mean I do, I do remember uh, later in the conversation I do remember saying well or, or at, at another point I do remember saying okay well does one plus one equal two and it's like up <laughs> and then it was like, great. When, uh, what the fuck do I say now? <laughs> you know, this kind of cosmic intelligence at, 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 at my fingertips, and I have no idea what I could, what I could try to ask them. Yeah. Is is this what you were trying to say on the night, or you were aware of this and you couldn't say it? Because I mean, you were telling me a lot of stuff, yeah. and and you know, you were aware that we were all having our individual experience. Yeah. So, you know, at one point you kind of gave me the impression, I, be, I best tell you later because, you know, you're not even really here with me right now. <laughs> well, that's, I mean, that was a, that was a part of it. So it, it was a little weird and I'm not sure, I'm not entirely sure what was happening. So, but, but for one thing, of course, I mean, you were, you were having your own trip and so it was kind of useless telling you and just about any of this because you were like, oh, I am. This means I'm fucking lace in the sky. And I'm like, okay, that's not what I'm talking about. So that, that's, your, that's your thing, man. <laughs> um, so that's, you know, that was cool. Uh, but you were on your own trip. That's the point. Um, so yeah. I, I, I couldn't, you know, I couldn't tell you anything. Um, but... Uh, but I also, I'm, I mean, I remember I said to you several times, like, oh, they don't want me to say it. Uh, and it was like, I don't, I don't know. I mean, part of it as well, I know, was, was self-consciousness. Um, but, but it kind of felt uh, as well, maybe they, they were like, no, I, don't, I mean, don't, don't say that. And, and then I would, like, shut up. And I, I, I would, like, try to trying to bring myself to say the words but I but I couldn't quite make it and I was like there's some something a bit funny going on here but maybe it was just self-consciousness combined with the with the drugs made it made it seem weird so I don't really know what that was yes because you were just saying ah I'm going mute I can't <laughs> I can't say it yes and then, and I'm saying dumb dumb things like well, without saying it, how about you just tell me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know that was it. That was the right thing to say, actually, in the moment because <laughs> the, I, I did manage to 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 blurt something out, um, and 
yeah. So I mean, the the thing was um, with this communication. Obviously, it's it started with these flashing lights in the sky. But as as time went on, um, it it seemed like um, the the communication started to become more more telepathic. And it was like these the I mean the lights were still a part of it, but it's like the 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 symbols of things. And it was kind of like it, it made me think of what. Um, trying to communicate with my, my deaf friend, Kari, uh, before I knew sign language, before I knew any sign language, not that I know a lot, um, he would uh, say, if, if, he wants to, if he wanted to say house, he wouldn't go like this, which is Australian, uh, like, like pushing, pushing the hand over in a, in a kind of wave out in front of you, which is a symbol for house or home. Uh, in Australian sign language, he would, he would go like this, like form a steeple with his hands um, forming a roof. And of course, you know that means house. Um, uh, so that that was kind of w what it was like um, to to interpret it. And then it seemed like it became uh, more and more telepathic to the extent that the that maybe the lights weren't really necessary as a necessary part of the communication. Um, gotcha. Yeah. So, so you ever get to a point where you were just speaking directly to? something just through thinking something and then feeling whether it was right or wrong yeah i i would say so maybe not maybe not 100 percent precisely but but yes um and yeah i I'm a, i mean i do remember as part of this process as well i was um i said okay well you know this up up means yes and, and down means no and then and then i said and, and that was kind of a bit too confusing and then i said well okay well let's let, let me just start with what we already know so we can build from there. I know that when you shake the li lights around like this, that means that I've misunderstood or that you want to start again or go off on a, on a, different, um, on, on a different line of thinking. So that's, that's something we know. But, yeah. No, I, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just thinking. It's just my computer made a noise. Okay. It's just um, saying hi. I don't think it knows what up is. <laughs> doesn't need to um, <laughs> so yeah then and, and, and another point I remember it was like blip blop blop like this the, the last one is like this swirl it's three, 360 degree motion swirl and I was like uh, not really sure what you mean there bro and, and uh, it did it again slowly and I'm like ah um, yeah, this place is called Earth. Um, Who's asking what's yeah? What do you call this place? Um, and uh, uh, well, actually, it occurred to me later. I was t uh, telling this story to my friend Link, and, and he said, um, "Well, I thought I thought you were going to tell them that that the place was like Estación Catorce, or <laughs> like the, the, the or d say the name of the desert or something." Um, uh, and that that gave a different perspective on it. It it it, it kind of makes sense. Um, but sorry, that, but that never occurred to you to say that. I mean, you just blurted out, or yeah. you, you thought Earth because yeah, because, because I assumed humans. they weren't from Earth, and I assumed that was the, the the best kind of address to give them. Yeah, I would imagine these assumptions are just right then and there. Like you know, there's no second question. And the assumption is there. It is. And yeah. and I'm human. I'm from Earth. These this activity is something else from somewhere else. And maybe maybe they don't even have planets where these guys are from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Possibly. So, um, so then I I, mem I remember at an, at another point they they said to me, or well, maybe it was that same conversation. I'm not sure because uh, the whole thing is kind of jumbled up and difficult to, to place in a sequential order. Um, but I remember um, they, they said, ah, you should invite us. If you invite us, we can come. And, and I said, well, that's, that's an interesting idea, but I'm not sure if that's the, the best idea because... Um, Camp's full. <laughs> <laughs> Six people limit. Um, <laughs> um, but... The, the 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 thing is um uh, i mean i don't 
maybe I don't I don't know you guys quite well enough. I mean, I need to be very careful with with whom I let into my house. Um, and they said, "What are you talking about? You you've known us for an eternity." And I said, "Well." I mean, that, that may be the case from your perspective, but from my perspective, I've known you for tonight for like four hours approximately. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't know if, how much more of this story you've got left, but just to jump in, hmm. um, how do you feel now? <clears throat> do you think maybe you should have invited them in? Yeah, I'm, I'm leaning more towards la- yes. Uh, left? Why was I about to say left? That's weird. I'm <laughs> leaning more towards yes. Uh, after uh, thinking about it, um, yeah. Um, because let's see. So, so yeah. I I said. Um, well, I said. Uh, well, my mind's just gone blank. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm leaning more towards yes, um, because um, for one thing, I guess. I mean, if the, if these these beings uh, are, are so powerful. Um, then let's see, I'm <laughs> trying to ar- arrange this, this thought in my mind, I guess, I mean, they could kind of do what they wanted anyway, but they're, they're, they're asking permission. I mean, that's kind of a good sign. They also, uh, I mean, they, they, they seemed, uh, like I said, they seemed grateful, uh, for whatever I had to offer them, um, they even gave me something in return, which I'll, which I'll talk about in a in a little while, um, and they, um, yeah, I mean, the, I guess I guess those are the more important points. the The other thing is, I mean, if they were really asking, maybe they were asking what this place is called, what Earth is called. Maybe they were asking what this desert is called. If it were just the desert, like if I, if I were just inviting them to the desert, then I would probably say yes, or or to my house. So I, I guess I would probably say yes, um, but. It, it's like, well, I, I'm not like the, the ambassador for Earth. I don't really have the, 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 the right to say yes for the entire Earth. I, I have the, some right to say yes to, to certain sections. Um, yeah, I'm going to get crazy. Yeah. Could this be something like um, one of these rules from the Galactic Federation where right. alien species are not... Well, I mean, this is something that, that I've... I don't, I'm not even sure if I believe this, yeah. but it's like I entertain because... I haven't have found any knowledge that's against it, but um, you know it seems to be pretty common um, astro talk that um, the Galactic Federation said, yeah, they're the human beings that are chilling on Earth. Um, even any other aliens that are on Earth cannot interact with the human right. um, species because they've got their own personal development thing going on. They need to learn. They're learning their own process. Um, we'll let them be hmm. for a certain amount of time. I don't know if that time is up or or that, that time is at a point so, where individuals can invite different right. species of yeah. So the the something. name the name for that, of course, is the the Prime Directive. Uh, Interesting. Yeah, he's from aware Star of Trek. It. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I was never a fan of Star Trek. Okay, but that's a, that's what they call it, the Prime Directive. Like, don't interfere with uh, developing species. Although gotcha. in the in the, those shows, they they broke that rule many times <laughs> but um that's that's the idea and and i think uh well i came up with a few hypotheses so i thought okay so may, maybe it's it's just uh like out of politeness so you don't want to enter someone's house in, unless they invite you um or you know maybe they're they're, they're like vampires and if you let them in then this oh hell breaks loose they right consume um you. <laughs> or or um Maybe it's it's like um, um, sort of politeness, but sort of it's it's kind of this spiritual rule. So if if you come into my house and I don't want you here, that's bad vibes, and it's not just bad vibes for you; it's bad vibes for me. You know, everything is off if someone comes into your house and you don't want them there. So it makes sense spiritually to to ask to make sure you are welcome yes. in somebody's house before you're entering. Um, so, so now I'm thinking, why the hell did you send me that video last night about the Mandela effect? <laughs> well, that's a no. Well, I'm always always interested in the Mandela effect. Was, that was just something that's come came up. It wasn't wasn't directly related to this. It seems that way. 
But in my reality, yeah, I, I'm looking at it like. Um, by the way, that video is very good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, put it few, in the link. Put a it few in of the those examples actually threw me a little bit. Like, this isn't. This is um, not my reality. Like, maybe in the last few years, ten years, I don't. I don't know. Minutes. Right. I I made decisions to shift my consciousness from the infinite array of Aaron's and Aaron lives to uh, bring myself to start driving this exact uh, experience. And the more that I move away from the, the experience that I was maybe 20 years ago in this world, there's certain uh, idiosyncrasies mm. that are slightly different. And if you were to invite them, that would create a whole new dimension where... Uh, yeah, well, pr probably because, I mean... It depends in what form they arrive, but if they arrived in in anything comparable to to their their true form, then just arriving would would fuck shit up like crazy. Yeah, because, <laughs> because they're so they're so um, they're so different from us. They're so they're so um, would, diverse in time and space, or or they don't you know time and space aren't things for them. So, <laughs> well, that, that's what they that's what they say where they are but when they go can can you invite or are we invited or maybe you know i would like to meet you but we need the invitation hmm. maybe there is a form where they where they can manifest here and maybe they are here that is not able to interact well look um yeah uh well I, i'll tell you this this first so the the other thing was i thought well maybe it's politeness or this spiritual thing or this or, or maybe it's like a link they're saying, let's establish a link. And we need that link. We need the connection um, for us to come there. It's it's like some kind of physical or metaphysical. We need... Address. Possibly. Yeah, lock possibly. In. Yeah, yeah, like lo lock, lock in on the position or something like that. Yeah. Um, so I had another thought, but was, what was the last thing you were saying? Well, I, well I'm, I'm talking about the Mandela effect because I feel like... Um, in these examples, there there are things that that the collective human race remember differently, and, and we move away from a reality that we will all remember. And there's like some people that say, "No, it's always been that way," and other people go, "No, um, this is very different to what I remember as a child or as ten years ago, or that was not the way I remember it." Um, I feel like you had the decision to to split away uh, hard fork the reality. <laughs> and, and, you know, and I mean, we're on the same team here, so I would have just gone with your reality. I love that, I love that terminology. Yeah, it's, 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 it's what it is. So, so appropriate. Yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> so, I mean, in, in, in that case, then, then we have uh, original or the new fork. And it yep. is, do you believe this is possible? Anyone that believes that it's possible or anyone that, that's open to the idea of uh, other uh, conscious life forms uh whether it's physical or not um then then you know they they won't even realize it they're sleeping they're going to work they're whatever living out their life and uh one day it's like all of a sudden we have disclosure on television mm. everyone else never saw it and continues to live their parallel universe mm. Mm. something like that how does right. it feel to have the uh to be in the driver's seat of Forking potential. <laughs> well, um, I, I I don't know if I really am. Uh, in in any case, I mean, I mean, I'm of of course, on many levels, like, is this a just a hallucination? Is this? Um, I mean, the other level is. I mentioned this to my to my buddy Link last night, and and he said to me, "Well, I mean, you know, Earth has been here for so long; it's just been chilling out. Um, not, nothing's really fucked it up supremely." And it seemed like it would be such a, such an imbalance to have a, a centralized um, uh, the central point of failure where just some guy out in the desert is just talking out to the stars and he's like, "Oh yeah, co uh, come on down," and then and then like the Earth explodes. <laughs> so he said, "Well, maybe it's like it, it might might have seemed like it's your decision, but maybe it's not exactly your decision, or maybe someone else has." Uh, or some something else, some other system has the power to veto it in case I made the wrong decision. 
Um, yeah, they're, they're collecting they're collecting curts, and I mean not just you, but anyone. Every single time someone goes out there that's got some uh, connection, I was able yeah. to make connection. Yeah. They're collecting them, so then critical mass, bam, the ships turn right. up. Right, so, yeah, some something like that, or you know, if I were, yeah, yeah, so basically something like that. Like it's when when a, when a certain amount of um, readiness is there. Then it's like when the when the when the student is ready, the master appears, and the, and that's um, that's when shit starts to to really happen. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, the other thing was, um, yeah. So so I've got here what I said to them, but this is exceeding my weirdness tolerance for now. So I'm gonna for this episode. <laughs> <laughs> well, for that for that episode, um, so I'm going to go back to camp, and they said, okay, okay, well, you know, we'll stay in touch or whatever. Um, and walking back to the campsite, uh, I, I started thinking, hang on, well, th- these these beings are like beyond time, or they have they have this completely different understanding of time, or time is nothing, or I, I don't know what their relationship to time is. But basically, it's like if if I came back out here to the desert in 40 years. Uh, and I, I said, actually, yeah, come, come on down. Um, they, they would be like, all right. Um, like, you know, uh, it's uh, only a second has passed since we asked you the first time. Or it's actually a second before we asked you the first time. Or um, it's actually the same it's time. Actually ri- yeah, it's written on the same page. Um, so we just we just scrolled down a little bit on the page, and then there you were. So we, we we decided to to come on down. And like you said, maybe they're already here. Well, that's the thing. Already here from from what perspective in time? Because in forty years, maybe I say yes. Then they come down. That actually means the past changes, and that actually means that's when. That's when we meet them, and they're already in, in, incarnated as 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 fifty year old humans. Um, so about about the about the gift um, about the token of appreciation. And so we, yeah, okay. Um, I've been hanging for this, so I'm getting comfortable. <laughs> All right. So like I said, you have this crater. Middle in, middle is the impact. At the edge of the crater, you have the lip. Uh, and then a part, a, a, away from that, you have the dust. So um, Saturday night was was the impact, the p- point of impact. But then you go back and, and you have 15 years earlier. And I had this strange change in my life. The things things started to go very differently and suddenly ga- gain these abilities. Um, and that's the lip of the crater. Um, and of course, it was very very disruptive at that time and then there's then there's these um secondary or tertiary effects that are outside of the crater and that's the, that's the dust and and yeah I, I won't really talk about those but but that's um see i have this idea that there's a lot of aliens here in mexico yeah it's, mexico is a very uh accepting place a lot of there's a lot of weirdness in mexico and um Maybe that's why you found yourself here as well as part of this preparation. <laughs> yeah, well, it's a it's a magical place. It? There is definitely something interesting about Mexico. So, the <laughs> the the thing is, um, I I had to I had to kind of uh, come back to camp and and lie there with this kind of knowledge, like uh, what seemed to be at the time as knowledge um, that. My entire life was like this. This uh, my entire life has has been affected by the, this this singular event happening on this happening on this one night where these aliens decide to to, to give me this un, unusual gift, which sent my life on a completely different course. Now, if if that hadn't happened, I would probably be uh, working in a in a safe uh, bank job right now. Um, as a security expert or in IT or, or so, something like that or in some web development firm, um, which is, you know, and there's nothing wrong with that. Completely um, respectable. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, a- anyone would, would call that success. But um, the the path my life took um, 
was was very different and and I think more um, for me more interesting. Um, so uh, in in terms of the perspective that assuming that they, this kind of thing is true, that that these aliens can come down and and say thank you, um, here's a little something, and change the entire course of someone's life. Assuming that's true, which who the fuck knows? <laughs> no, well, th- <laughs> maybe it's just is, a trip. Th- but this is your trip. Yeah. Well, it's still, it, still my trip. I guess the trip's never ending. But. Yeah, <laughs> but but I mean, you're, you're the you're the only one that ex- you're the you're the one in it. <laughs> um, so what other what other existence is there other than what you're experiencing anyway? And what you I mean, what you remember, what you know, your, your desires, your hopes, outcomes, dreams is the only thing that that you know. So the fact that that all changed because something happened um, years ago, decade and a half ago. Um, yes, but the, I mean, you're saying because, but 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 because is is the wrong word. I mean, there's I mean things things didn't change. Well, okay. I mean, I mean, in a sense, they did change because of what happened 15 years ago. But from 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 this from this trip perspective, things changed. Because of what happened on Saturday night, and that went back in time, back in time. It's not really back in time. It's just all at once. Um, cool, cool. Okay, so what was it? What was the gift? Yeah. Okay. So, well, like I said, with uh, with this these these hand movements. I mean, why do why do my hands move like that? Why do they do that? Um, the um, the. The thing is, I mean, the, the gift is mm, okay. So the gift is uh, thanks to two. <laughs> um, that that's what they okay. Let me let me try to explain this again. So uh, you know when um, when you experience a strong emotion with someone. Um, so so someone is having a strong em- emotion. Uh, and uh, you start to experience that emotion too, especially, for example, if you're sitting in the same position as them or, or like they're, they're sitting on the couch and you kind of mimic their, their, their body language, uh, you'll start to experience uh, similar things as, as they're experiencing in their mind. Um, but, for example, if, if they have this, this intense experience of, say, um, an embarrassing moment in their life or some, something they, which they intensely regret... Um, you might have the same experience of regret, but your um, the memory which you have might not be the same as as the memory they have. You might have a memory from your own experience, um, which is analogous ana- analogous to to the the memory of the experience in, that they're having. So it, um, they they have one thought, you um, and and that triggers an emotion or one way or the other. Um, and you have you have the um, the same emotion, but it triggers a different thought because um, you're drawing on different experiences. Now, so what the, what they said to me, I mean, the gift the gift is um, thanks to two, and th- thanks to two was <laughs> thanks to two was a game uh, which was released in in 1989. It was the the the, the sequel to Thanks to, it was called Firehawk, um, or <laughs> okay, that's a. That's I, I'm I'm sitting with you, man, and, and I lost you. I got no idea what the hell you're talking okay. about. But like I said, okay. So in my mind, the thought appeared as thanks to two. Okay. Okay, but that's not really what it was. That is that is how the thought came across. That is how my mind interpreted it, because what they said was was something which which made sense to their mind, which was like this game of of a relatively simple technology. Um, particularly one that was a sequel. I'm not not sure why it's it's a sequel, but I, I mean, I had related thoughts about Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles too. But um, but always a sequel for some reason. So so they were thinking about this this program that they wrote. You, you 
have a thought in, in your head with an, with an emotion attached to it um, and you have a certain perspective on that thought, um, say that that thought is somehow transmitted to me or that, that emotion rather with the, with the thought, with this kind of direction towards the thought, um, that's, that's transmitted to me. The emotion is transmitted to you. The emotion with, with the direction towards a thought. Okay. Yeah, pointing yeah. in the direction of a thought. Now, in, in your mind, it points to a certain, certain thought, a certain experience that you've had. In my mind, it points to a certain experience that I've had. So I'm, I'm, having, uh, I'm experiencing a thought that's analogous to the thought that, that you're experiencing. Yes. Yes. Okay. So uh, an, an alien s- says to you a, a thought or they, they project thought to you. Um, that that has some experience at, at, attached to it, some some uh, some fragment of their their experience. It's pointing to an element of their own experience. It's yep. transmitted to you, or well, to me in this case. Yes. Um, so it's pointing to this thing. It's pointing to this this simulation or this 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 video game from the past. Uh, that's a sequel. That's also kind of dated, like it's kind of simplistic. Uh, uh, and they say, "Well, this is this is what we're giving you." Um, so they they're giving uh, a, a program. So it's like they've they've downloaded a program in, into into my brain. Um, and the thing is, uh, they can't really be. Well, I mean, I mean, there's several ways to. To look at this, and I don't know exactly which one is more accurate, but they can't be exactly accurate with time. So it's not like if if they down if they if they if they send the transmission, if they um, transmit this this program into my mind at, at a at well, if they do it at at all, it's not going to arrive at the time that that would be most convenient or something like that. It's just going to arrive. It's going to arrive sooner, later, earlier, um, whenever, but it, it arrives. Okay. Yeah. So it's not necessarily going to arrive Saturday when we had the conversation. Yeah. So the, the time it arrives is insignificant. At some point they, they, call then it. because, or imprecise or yeah, or perhaps it's insignificant or, um, or, or perhaps it's 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 very significant. I'm not I'm not I'm not sure which. <laughs> okay. Perhaps yeah. it's very precise. I'm not I'm not sure, but it's not necessarily going to be at the moment that we have the conversation. Gotcha. Or like I said, with the with with the crater analogy, the the meteoroid comes crashing to Earth. It has an impact. Um, at that point, the, the there's there's an impact, but the the Earth all around it is dislodged. Yep. Yep. And like I said, there's a lip at the edge of the crater. Yep. Uh, and that lip was 15 years ago. Gotcha. Yeah. So that lip was these uh, these these this strange change that I experienced. These uh, these these odd experiences that I start to have, um, and these uh, these these abilities which I seem to gain, which changed the course in my life. Um, which to them is like this this game, which is a little simplistic, a little dated, um, uh, and that's uh, well, according to the trip, that's yeah. what they gave me. Do you have a relationship to this game, or is any? You also yeah, mentioned it was, it Ninja good, Turtles as well. It's a good game, yeah, uh, um, yeah. <laughs> But it's well, it's kind of funny because te- teenage, yeah, it was teenage Min- ninja turtles two, or I saw it in my mind as TMNT two, which, uh, let's see, well, that's kind of funny because that's not a, um, I mean, on Nintendo, that was actually TMNT two was was actually uh, TMNT arcade, so which it, which wasn't a game I played very much. Uh, but, but yet, the the thought came to you. Any significance between the two? Well, the, 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 both both of them released around the same time. Both of them a similar level of of complexity or simplicity. Both of them sequels. You'd have been about well five years old when that was released. Yes, but I probably didn't play either of them till I was seven, eight, nine. 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so have you joined the dots between that and, and the and the lip? <laughs> well, that's what that's what I'm saying to you. Okay, the lip is the the lip is the 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 side effect or the the uh, the extended effect of the of the meteoroid. The meteoroid is the information being downloaded. Yeah. The 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 exact impact spot was Saturday night, but the lip of the crater was 15 years ago. Okay, so uh, I'm reading, I could be wrong, yeah. and I'm happy for you to correct me, but you felt like there was a, a snap change, like what what happened? No, you probably didn't realize something happened. You're just like, I'm different. Did you notice you were different at the, the lip point? What was, yes. was that, 19? 17. Uh, 17 years old. You're like, something's changed here. Yes. Yes. Don't know what caused it. Don't yes. know don't know why. Yes. No info other than I'm still alive, I'll just run with it. <laughs> yeah. Pr- pretty much. And then yeah. and then on Saturday night, that's when uh the the meteor of information change in your life belted into the desert. Well, I mean you were in the desert, so it's got nothing to do with the desert. Mm-hmm. Um and you realize that you are now at this point at the halfway mark in time, which well, is irrelevant. Yeah. I, I don't know necessarily if it's a, it's a halfway mark. So the, I mean, this meteor crater um, analogy probably isn't perfect because I, I think the, the the effects will extend for the rest of my life. So it's not like fifteen years in the future I'm going to reach the other lip and and things are going to change again. And you, I, I don't think that will happen. But I mean, who knows? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, essentially, you're in the. Okay. Okay. So I mean, yeah. We go, let, let's play that the example is not 100, percent but that, that's kind of how you feel. Yeah. So, yeah. what happened Saturday that makes you feel, think, or know this is the case? <laughs> well, I don't. I, I don't know it. I don't know. Like, I don't know anything. Um, so, uh, okay. So to 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 get into this. Let's see. So I, I, I gave you the example of um, the the other night I mentioned to you. Um, imagine if you're uh, like a kind of video game developer, or you're you're a developer of simulations, and you kind of maybe you trade these simulations. Maybe that's that's your profession. If you if you have such a thing as a profession, or maybe that's your pastime, something like that. Yeah. Um, and you want to create a, a game which is so new that nobody's ever seen it before. Um, uh, so how do you do that? Well, you can think really hard and try to be creative. That's certainly one way. But what if you live in, in a society with extremely advanced technology where perhaps traveling through dimensions is, is something relatively easy? Um, in that case, maybe you go to another dimension, try to find out what people are doing or what things or what beings exist there and what what their assumptions about the universe are and model your simulation or, or your game on these, on, the, on these assumptions or on, on these uh, physical phenomena which happen in, in this reality or, or in, this, in this dimension, in this realm that you're visiting. Yeah. Why, yep. why recreate the wheel in regard right. to virtual reality when yep. I can just tap into something and recreate that knowing that no one else has seen it yet? Yep. Exactly, exactly. So at one point, uh, I'm, I'm lying there by the fire and I notice that, that my leg starts twitching uh, in a kind of an unusual way. Um, and it's like the same muscle, the same muscle over and over. Yep. Uh, and I think, what is, what is doing that? And my interpretation was, okay, this is like, imagine if you have a kind of uh, a mechanical device, it's housed in a box you you take off the back of the box and there's all these moving pieces um, within it and, and you start you you stick a little spanner in or a little some less intrusive device into there um, to see what will happen when you when you move certain pieces in yep. the mechanical device now that that mechanical device is um, either our universe or, or our uh, our, our, our bubble of reality. I'm not. I'm not sure which, or maybe they're kind of the same thing. 
um, and or or maybe it's maybe it's my mind. It's or or all three in some in some sense. Yes. Um, so that that touching this little cog, and and that little cog is is the muscle in my leg. And my, so every time they're touching, they're like, mmm, 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 mmm. what's this? Mmm, mmm, mmm. Uh, and and every time my my leg is twitching, and I say ah okay, so they they they're looking for information about this um, about this part of our reality. So um, I went through my leg kind of systematically and uh, flexed every every muscle in my leg uh, one at a time, um, both legs, um, so they could um, so they could kind of see the 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 association between electrical impulses and 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 motion or something like that yeah um if they to to get a model of of this device so so you felt like they were inside well i mean in a bad way of saying inside your leg just playing with it trying to say what how does this function and then you started sending individual brain signals to individual muscles so they could map what the process is completely in the leg which they probably don't even know what a leg is yes it's just yes because at the, at the beginning of this conversation they didn't necessarily know what space was because if they didn't know what up was that indicates maybe space isn't isn't such a such an important idea to them yeah um so then we'll put, we'll put this like okay this is space and the, and this is time and this is these these are these are thoughts, and then these are electrical impulses, and, they, and these are these are muscles which are controlled by thoughts. Um, so they're like piecing this this reality together uh, to get this idea or this like model um, of of how it functions. Then, so I I went through and did like a, a full range of motion with my leg, so they could see see the the, the movement in the joints, and and. Uh, then uh, I gave them like a, like a demo and showed them which muscles would move when a when a person was walking, um, so they could get an idea of the, how the whole thing clicked together. Yeah. Um, the, this uh, more um, the, um, an idea of the the model in motion, um, and um, so after that. Um, a, a little while or a long while after that, um, I, I went to uh, I went to take a piss again, and, and again it was like, you know, things things on every side. I don't know where to piss, um, and I found a space and, and went to piss. But the, it was like all the all all the spirits around me were like lit, little um, little men or little little people, and they all wanted to shake my hand. Uh, as if, uh, as if I'd done something cool, like they wanted to congratulate me, uh, or thank me, or something. <laughs> yeah. And um, uh, I was like, okay. And I, I remember joking to you about it and saying, you know, you know what's going to happen tomorrow morning somewhere in the in the universe, um, in this other galaxy. There's going to be uh, this periodical, and on the on the front page is going to be this headline that says first contact with with alien consciousness or first conversation with alien consciousness and someone tugging on your dick <laughs> not tugging on my dick it's like me there waving with one hand and my, my, my other hand on my dick <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> um, that's, that's right yeah no. I, I have that leave that out but you know whatever um uh, then i after after i finished uh urinating I, I had i had this little vision again it's like this this uh, cover art of a game from the from the 1980s with the, with pastels or something on it, um, and it had a picture of these mechanical legs uh, or like this this biomech, um, which was in, um, basically in, entirely legs. Like there, there wasn't a, a torso or head to it, uh, and so it was like they they created this game or this 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 simulation. Using the information that that I had gave them, and um, and then I, I assume it, it was in some way successful for them, and so uh, the, the simulation was to run with these RoboCop legs, something like that. I, I mean, I got the impression it's kind of like this this game like Mech Warrior, like maybe you 
you know, you have these links and you, you try to either you have weapons on them or you try to run into other um, other sets of legs to, to demolish them or something like that. That that was the impression, but uh, I don't know. Without playing it, I can't say. Yeah, I, re- I remember you coming back telling me, yeah, I just got myself the front cover of some intergalactic magazine. <laughs> but that was a that was a joke, though. That was a, <laughs> no, I mean, the, this is all I remember you saying at the time. I was, the, was, I was just morning? I was kidding about it, but I mean the 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 point of the point behind my joke was that I just had the, the that I was there like interacting with them in some respect while I was taking a piss. <laughs> so, I mean, the part that I was interested in, yeah, that I was interested, very interested in on the night, and still am now. Yeah, what exactly do you think was the gift? Well, that's what <laughs> that's what I've been trying to explain to you. So uh, <laughs> it, was, okay. it wasn't one of those Rubik's cubes already half done, was it? No, no. <laughs> okay, that's a good that's a good gift. No, uh, like I said, it's <laughs> the, the the things that that happened when I was seventeen. Um, the, the the change that I went through, the fact that I had they had the, these new abilities, which seemed to come out of nowhere. Um, the the change in perspective on my life, also the the ability to think more uh, conceptually rather than linearly. I mean, most people in my family think linearly, but I t- I tend to think conceptually. Though I still have the ability to think linearly. Yeah. Um, and that's that's a change which which can make a big difference. Because um, if you can't grasp things conceptually and it makes it difficult to to analyze ideas it makes it difficult to look at new ideas yeah what what good is the phone call if you're unable to speak (laughs) Uh, or think in this case what's the point of having a brain right if you're unable to think right right if you use your brain like 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 a computer like a like pascal's um what was it? Babbage's difference engine, or something like that. I mean, First your brain yeah. is capable of much more. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, your brain is capable of much more of linear thinking, and that's a, that's um, you know why not why not take it, push it to the limit. Um, <laughs> um, so, uh, okay. Do you understand? Have I explained yeah, no, myself? I, I, I've, you, I've, I've now got, you understand what um, the gift was. Well, or the, no, to- the no, token no. of appreciation. Do I understand the gift? I also understand what you were trying to say the other night and, right. and why you couldn't tell me. Right. I mean, you could have told me all that and it wouldn't have made any sense last night. Exactly. I don't even think I could have sat through your explanation the, exactly. the other night because I was pacing around like a madman. <laughs> I think I sat down and I don't know. Um, so that, that's, that's really cool. <laughs> I mean, that, that's... Um, yeah. So what, what happens now? Do you, um, I mean, I'm assuming now you have a better understanding of, of this, of the concept of the gift. You knew that something dramatically changed in your life when you're 17, Mm -hmm. obviously for the better, because I mean, I've only, I've, I I met you when you were probably what mid twenties, 22, I think. Yeah. 23 maybe. Yeah. Yeah, years after a change. So I never knew the the Kurt beforehand. Right. I, I've always known the uh, the Kurt that we know now ish, um, because the, the the Kurt that has these ideas and is happy to sit down with you and talk to you about it and, and help try and develop you know your own thinking of the way you think, mm-hmm. um, which which is great. But uh, what do you think of people? Have you come across people that have that have got the same? In a, in a way, the same gift, or you can recognize that what you've been gifted with uh, is also evident in other people. Okay, okay. Well, um, yeah, I, I, well, there's, I mean, there's, there's one particular person, and I don't want to say, say him by name, but, um, but, but I, I do kind of wonder if, if, if uh, the, the effects are similar. Um, I don't know if the cause is similar, but... Um, but I, I have to say, it seems like the the, the effects are similar. So, yeah. um, you know, people these days, to, um, or uh, we see these articles talking about the the African view of uh, the, or the sorry, the shamanistic view 
of a mental illness. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, I, I see that and I think, uh, you know, people are some, in some cases have been give, given a gift um, and sometimes they're, tr- they're treated as, as mentally ill. Sometimes they are in, in some respect, but, but um, the, the kind of treatment which is available isn't necessarily going to help them at a deep level. Yeah. Um, it, it might be able to treat the sy- symptoms. Well, I mean, some, sometimes uh, things like psychotherapy might, might be helpful, but, but um, I mean, a, a lot of the time, probably, um, these talking therapies. Um, yeah. But, but um, uh, I, I think a lot of these things have the, the pretense of knowledge and not, um, not knowledge in its entirety. It's like they, they have this, this small nugget of knowledge and, and, and some of it is very good, um, but they don't necessarily have the whole picture. Um, not that you need to necessarily talk about aliens to get the whole picture, but, but yeah. there, there are the sides to it. Um, well, and yeah, just regarding um, mental illness, and, and my my knowledge in this area is next to nothing. But um, I, I know a lot of people are concerned with uh, marijuana use or other psycho psychedelic no um, psychoactive psychoactive yeah drugs. And um, I, I don't think people are worried at me too much because it's like, well, that kid's already too far gone. <laughs> Don't worry about him anymore. But um, when Joanna mentioned to her mum, hmm. um, I mean, I didn't, I didn't even know. I would have respected her if she didn't tell her mum where she was going. Hmm. Because, you know, sometimes maybe uh, I can understand why people that, that know what we're into could say, you know, they're, um, they're bad apples. Don't hang out with these guys. <laughs> they're going to take you to the desert and load you up on, yeah, drugs or whatever. But... Joanna's mum said to her, no, Joanna's friend, no, Joanna's mum's friend, because she was on the phone to Joanna's, Joanna was on the phone to her mum, and a friend that was with her mum said, if Joanna has any uh, symptoms, no, no, pre-exposure, uh, I don't know, what, what, do you, what do you call, um, what do you call when you suspect somebody might be... Uh, like warning signs. Come on, yeah, 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 like, like warning signs of like... Uh, schizophrenic or, or me- a mental illness in general. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, Joanna said that her mum's friend said, um, if Joanna has any of that, make sure she doesn't take it. Right. Um, because these kind of experiences can trigger things. Right. Um, like as if gifts that some people have, you know, you look at like shamanistic societies and say some people are gifted Hmm. Some people have ability to to see energy or to read things on the other side or or have the gift to flip out for a while um, and have this mind trip and then come back, which may take years out of their life. Um, yeah, it's pretty best not to not to indulge in in these type of substances. Hmm. So that makes me begin to wonder if that's what the the medical scene seems to. Uh, Delivered to the world of these ideas, mm. then, then perhaps, perhaps you already have the gift. You always had the gift. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm, like, may- maybe, maybe, like, like maybe, <laughs> maybe what what we're talking about is someone having a gift. And you mentioned someone else. I can probably think of a handful of people that that I think, um, on one level, are pretty perceived as not quite right, or mm. they'll never be the same again because something happened. But for that something to happen, maybe they already had something, or maybe yes. they already were somebody. Maybe yes. they already, yes. you know, you know what I mean. Um, yeah, that was really hard to explain. <laughs> it shouldn't have been so hard. I don't know why I'm stumbling through that so much. Um, yeah, I guess some people are, are naturally, yeah, some people are naturally called to these kind of things, and I think it's because maybe they do have that that gift. Or um, that calling, mm. and then they don't quite fit in the box that they're put into, and the only way to keep them in the box is either drugging them, or once they get out of the box, the only way to keep them quiet is to drug them, which is which is what modern medicine does. Yeah, well, certain, certainly parts of it. Yes, yes, uh, yeah. Well, I yeah, I guess uh, I mean 
substances like this, these these sacred medicines. I mean, of course, they do, they deserve respect, and they're not they're not just shit you should fuck around with. I mean, you do have to be careful. And and actually, in retrospect, I do feel like I was a little reckless going out there without having read uh, a lot about peyote. But <laughs> so I, I guess maybe, maybe I kind of got got lucky to <laughs> to not uh, get into any trouble. Um, but, but would you say it's more intense than what you imagined? Um, I well, I don't know. I didn't have too too many preconceptions. I mean, uh, I I don't think I mentioned yet. I mean, like, um, well, I haven't mentioned today that my my friend Larry. Um, told me like his his him and his friends went out there and th- things were a little um, brighter and the colors were cooler and, and stars looked cool or something like that but that was about the extent of their experience um, but I didn't treat that as as like okay so that's what peyote is I get I guess uh, I mean I did the thought did cross my mind at one stage like well I hope that's not all it is. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it definitely, um, definitely that is not all it is, is that there's definitely something else to it. Um, but mm, yeah. So, I mean, people have to be ca- careful with these, these medicines. And, um, I, I guess, I mean, uh, if I had taken this in the, in the wrong time in my life, if I, if I were, um, yeah, if I were in a different stage in my life, if I were a di- different person and, and didn't have this uh, a kind of strong grounding in, um, with, within myself or relatively strong grounding, certain level of maturity, certain understandings of, of philosophy, what you can, um, what conclusions um, you should and, and, and shouldn't jump to. Not that I'm the greatest at that, but I, but I have yeah. some idea about it. Um, if 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 I took taken it with without that kind of stuff, uh, this would have been. I mean, this would have sent sent me to a to a very weird place. Like I I wrote, I wrote down that the um, the thing is like you have a single experience um, one night of your life, or you know maybe it goes on for months, whatever. You can't necessarily base your your entire belief system after this one thing because to, to do that would mean making assumptions if you make assumptions probably a lot of them going to be wrong and then and then you turn you turn it into a, some kind of religion or cult and you're tr- trying to convince other people that that the the altarians are going to come down to save us or some 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 nonsense like that which is a, a little bit you know it's extrapolating too much from from the experience Can, can you tell me again, um, just in the break there, you were telling me something, something about um, slipping things into to, to your decades of experience. Can you, can you get, get that thought out again? I'll do what I can. <laughs> uh, it was what you mentioned. Yeah. You said that uh, depending on, on which stage in your life you were that you consumed this, this medicine, is, uh, your mind is very different to how you receive it. Mm-hmm. So I, I think, okay, it might appear that we're pretty loose. I I would have to agree that I, I went out there to have a good time. I did not do enough research on peyote. It's kind of, it's kind of hard to, I mean, anyone that's been listening to this would think, um, would listen to this and they would imagine that they could take a equal amount of peyote of what we did, which I think was pretty heavy dose. Mm-hmm. Um, and they would probably assume to have a similar experience, and and maybe they they would have a similar experience, but the difference would come from the the previous experience and knowledge that that we have uh, related to the way we conceptualize and perceive our own world. I think if somebody went out there and has never had a a spiritual or a, an alternate experience to reality they might completely flip out and go, what's real? What's fake? You know, what is this experience? If, yes. if never in my life have I seen the sky turn into glitter and floating turtles and and moving stars, 
then then maybe I've been mean, living a complete lie and they flip out and and I don't know what happens. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's a, that's that's the clincher, like the um, the this this assumption, like okay, so so it turns out that that some of the the stuff uh, I knew was false, and that must mean everything I know is false, and that's that's uh, that's a dangerous path to go yeah. down. Yeah, um, and and then. So you, you need to tread carefully with that. So, of course, we, we recommend, I mean, if you're going to do something like this, not that we're, not that we're saying anybody should, uh, <laughs> but um, you, you need to take your precautions. And um, actually, my our buddy Maverick wrote an interesting article about certain precautions that you could take, you, you should take um, when undergoing a psychedelic experience. So, so we'll link that in the in the show notes. Yeah. Um, so, so you can... Get an get an idea of, of a guide or um, somewhere to to go with your your research and who who to contact and who's good to to hang out with and that sort of thing. Yes. Um, so yeah. So you you were saying like um, because because of the because of the the decades of experience that I've had about about um, assessing information, looking for truth and that sort of thing, um, that made th- this experience not. Well, it was overwhelming, but it wasn't. It, it wasn't over, overly overwhelming. Um, the the thing I wanted to say related to that was, I mean, uh, after after all this, and I think after I, uh, well, pretty much after I'd seen, had had uh, the final contact there, I was there la- laying by the fire, and um, I had these these thoughts like, uh, okay, so. Hang on. So, um, so my entire life has actually been like this toy. My entire adult life is this toy get given to me by by aliens, or it's like these aliens are playing a game with my life. But I was like, well, hang on. Well, that's uh, that's not quite right. I mean, what actually happened was uh, I, I met some nice aliens, and they and and they 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 gave they gave me this thing a, as a gift. Not that they were like playing with with my life like like I was a pawn but they 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 gave me something which happened to have a, a, a great effect um at least you know again with the within the context of of the trip we're assuming that this experience um was actually what it purported to be um uh but at at the same time I was like holy fucking shit um and i was thinking i i just want to get off i want i want this trip to end at the same time i thought um there's no way to get off this trip because this trip is my life i mean this this trip has changed the context of of many events in my life and there's no way to get off that um and i mean it didn't cross my mind to commit suicide or or anything like that because that's not that's that's not a route i would take yeah. Um, but if if someone were pla- placed in that position, of that existential crisis, or this this um, yeah, I suppose existential is the right word, or this this complete change of context of of your life um, in those few hours, that could be a, a very delicate situation. Yeah. Um, and so so these things do require care, and they do require maturity. And and, uh, and and certain skills, maybe like, uh, for example, meditation or yoga, um, to 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 help you maintain focus. This understanding that this too will pass, which is something that's that's so key, and that's that's something which is right in me. Like, the, <laughs> I, I I don't think that understanding will will ever leave me. I know I know uh, I, I know it's there. I know things change. Um, one day doesn't necessarily mean a whole lot in one person's life because life life goes on. Uh, so that's yeah, it, it's yeah. it's a funny it's a funny thing to try. I mean, we've been trying to talk about it, but there's no way you're ever going to live our personal trips, right? And uh, I mean, from my my personal experience, I, I'm quite familiar with. Um, I'm just going to say it. Quite familiar with several drugs. Mm. with the effects of a whole array of of substances and and now uh, i understand that some people might go you know that that sounds very fun and cool and all but what a waste of time in life you know 
looking for these kind of things, but I, I respect mm. that. I respect that. You know, like for example, my my dad, yeah, doesn't doesn't really uh, have any interest in any of this, right? You know, and he's never he's never ever told me. You know, you shouldn't do that. He he's just like, well, be careful, mm. be careful, because he respects everyone. Everyone has their own trip. Where mm. it becomes interesting is that this isn't the first time that I've had a trip. And I mean, like a trip where I'm super sensitive to energy or hyper perception. Hmm. And, and I wonder sometimes even within this recording, I, I was thinking, am I just laying in the desert right now? And I just snap and have this thought. And all of a sudden here I am thinking about recording the trip, even though I'm still in the trip. And then I wonder, maybe this isn't the first trip. Maybe this is still the time that I episode the face of death and I'm laying on the road in front of a nightclub in Sydney and I'm tripping out. Did I ever come back to reality or did I die there? And this is something else. It's like, once you start opening these doors, you need to be certain that you're going to continue you uh, experiencing this path because one trip can roll into another trip. And then when you come back to reality, Hmm. as it may seem, or you wake up and go, wow, that was a hectic night. You wonder Nothing ever seems quite real because I could have an, uh, uh, these, an elf run out from behind the cupboard here or I could, uh, I could wake up and be find myself laying in bed with a bit of a headache and I would just continue my journey as this spiritual warrior, like, you know, throw at me whatever you want and I will keep being me, living my life to the maximum that I, I believe that I should and will play at. Um, because life after these kind of trips doesn't seem quite real anymore. And I wonder, I wonder sometimes when I wake up tomorrow, when I wake up today, am I still the same person? Because you realize that your perception of reality is your perception of reality, nothing more, nothing less. And perhaps the day to day life just becomes a little bit dull. And then now I find myself wanting to explore extra levels of, of consciousness. And then you, you look at other people that have done that. And then we, we, we hop in and start talking to or watching videos of um, Terence McKenna or, or some of the, uh, the diaries from um, episodes from uh, Aubrey Marcus. And, uh, you know, ev- everyone like, I mean, my personal favorites, uh, even, uh, you know, I talk about Duncan Trussell, I talk about Joe Rogan, and we all become, I mean, even, even um, London Real. Mm. What's his name again? Brian Rose. Brian Rose. We're all just people that are trying to live out an experience. Mm. And I'm not sure why we have to. I'm not sure why we are called. I mean, because we are called to to live out something. Yeah, I mean, well, I, I think so. I mean, yeah, I mean, we 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 didn't really get into this, but it was it was kind of strange how um, so many things went wrong in our in, in our journey trying to get out there, but but in the end, it it all it all tied up and it all came together. So, um, I, I guess that's a that's our final note. Uh, so. Thanks for thanks for sharing the journey with me, Aaron. Yeah, I'm still here. Just got battery failure. <laughs> um, yeah, man, no worries. I'll be happy to join you in uh, in many more, <laughs> many more to come. Great. The, the trip reports will continue, <laughs> and the journey reports, the life report, <laughs> the paradise paradox. So there it is, another episode of the paradise paradox. Another brain expanding cellular invigorating episode of the paradise paradox i hope you guys learned something we definitely did we learned that peyote is a must for spiritual development and it does help um, break down the barriers of communication between human beings and our civilization and in this time to an alien intelligence that exists on the other side of something we may call time or something that we're unaware of, other dimensions, other realities. None of us know. So to get the show notes, to enjoy the the story, maybe to get some links to follow up some more information, check out the website, uh, www.theparadiseparadox.com forward slash 119, episode 119. Um, 
if you are about decentralization, if you're about um, empowering content creators, and if you produce content yourself, jump on steamit.io and check out the content, uh, open an account, start up voting people and start earning a little cash money because this is the sharing economy and this is about putting real value where on real value on the value of content so it's about it's about time it really is peace love be well all the best from the paradise paradox thanks for joining us peace